Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Today is a big day, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, this is XRP Army South Africa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me just inform you that I am not financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is only for the educational purposes. So, ladies and gentlemen, today is the 13th of June. I made a little video uh, early in the morning that we are going to see the emails, uh, the Hinman emails around 2 o'clock. And indeed, it happened. It happened exactly around 2 o'clock. I received, we received the Hinman emails. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a corruption, corruption of the highest order in the Security and Exchange Commission. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to see the people getting arrested after these documents. After these uh, e e emails, we are going to see people getting arrested. How can a person uh, called Brad uh, guide the regulator on what they must say in the speech? Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to this. This is from Security and Exchange Commission. They say, as the general overall comment, this speech is what gen uh, the general public or market participants have been asking for. Then they continue. They say, so we are sub very supportive of the speech. And we remember in the beginning of the lawsuit, Ripple said, the speech was, was the guidance to the public and Security and Exchange Commission responded and said is it was a human's personal opinion. It was not uh, the public guidance. Now they say we are very supportive of the speech. That is, that is a lie. That is a lie. When they say a human speech was just a, 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 a personal, uh, for his personal opinion, that was the lie. So now remember people didn't believe if gate, uh, 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 was real. They didn't believe. Until today, when they, when Ripple dropped the emails. So they continue. Security and Exchange Commission said, before making a blanket statement on ETH, the Security and Exchange Commission went to, went to Butarin. That is Vitalik of Ethereum. They went to Butarin to discuss if an asset is a security, how can you do that while you are a regulator? They went to Butarin to discuss, um, to discuss if the asset is a security or not was based on the law. So, ladies and gentlemen, now we know that Vitalik was on the phone with Hinman before the Ethereum free pass speech. They spoke, they, they was, they were talking on the telephone when, before the Ethereum free pass speech. So if the Ethereum free pass, free pass speech is real, it is true, is confirmed today. And if XRP, uh, 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 uh if Ripple doesn't win the lawsuit by today, I don't know. Because this is a clear, a clear understanding that the Ripple is going to win. It's already win, won the lawsuit. So they continue saying, 
the Secretary Exchange co- uh, uh, a Commission communication suggests that the Security and Exchange Commission's own official were well aware that the speech will lead to creator confusion and deliberately recommended giving the in the industry parti- in industry's participant less details. They were well aware. They were well aware that this speech will cause a greater confusion to the market participants. They were well aware. So, ladies and gentlemen, now, uh, this person called Brett was encouraging the hinman to say Ethereum was not a security. And the document supported this, this statement. He was busy encouraging Hinman on the four on the emails to say Ethereum was not security. Now the sex says we say, we <clears throat> we still have reservation about in uh, uh, in uh, uh, including um, the statement directly about the ETH in the speech, and they continue. It seems is it, it it seems that it will be difficult for the agency to take a different position on the ether uh, in the future. Now the sec is uh, confirmed that Hinman had a call with Vitalik Buterin of Ethereum later that week to confirm their understanding of how ethereum foundation operate that that was happened ladies and gentlemen this is this is this is the corruption of the highest order what we've seen today is a corruption of the highest order now brett told a hinman that we have three key comments for your digital asset speech. Now, this is the guidance from Brett to the Hinman. He says, uh, we have three key comments on your digital asset. This is from the Hinman. This is, this is from Brett's email to Hinman. It is great speech, but we think that a few points could help to make, uh, to make it stronger. So now, the first point he was talking about is we think that up front it will help if you add a disclaimer that, uh, that the remark focus on the 1933 Act. That is spread to Hinman. He is guiding the Hinman, the regulator. So now, the second point says as written the language remain unclear as to whether if is a security i like this one he says as written on the speech the language remain unclear as to whether if is a security now if you want to make um an affirmative statement that it is not a security the language could be strong just say it Brett say uh, is telling a hinman that just say it say these words ethereum is not a security that is what Brett wanted the hinman to say and the third uh, point says now says on page eight of the speech, he is telling a, 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 a hinman. On page eight of the speech, when you talk about implications under the federal security laws, when an asset is considered a security, we would appreciate that is from Brad. We would appreciate if you would add, and I quote. They are lots of issues being addressed by the division of trading and the markets. That is, that, that is what a Brett wanted to, him meant to say. That 
there are a lot of issues being addressed by our division of trading and marketing and investment management because he says on the page eight of uh, 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 when when to when you talk about the implications under the federal uh, security law when a asset uh, 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 is considered a security we would appreciate if you would add these words i quote there are a lot of issues being addressed by our division of trading and marketing investment management including the broker dealer Ladies and gentlemen, this is the corruption of the highest order. We've seen the Security and Exchange Commission, all the uh, uh, the people who were there, including the Gary Gangsla himself, must just go to jail today. They must spend the first night in jail. So, ladies and gentlemen, now I'm going to I'm going to share this video with you. This video is from this video is from Stuart. Alter, uh, Alter, uh, Alter Roti explaining Bin, Bill Hellman is in famous speech of 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, this is now, now we are going to have a clear understanding. This is a clear analytical video that we are going to have to see the corruption that is happening there, that have been happening uh, that has been doing by the Security and Exchange official. Ladies and gentlemen, please have a listen to this video now. On June 14th, 2018, then SEC Director of Corporation Finance, William Hinman, gave a high profile speech where he declared that a token is not a security when it becomes, quote, sufficiently decentralized. But internal emails and documents show that senior SEC officials repeatedly warned Inman that his speech wasn't true to the law and would greatly confuse the markets even more than they already were. Now, after more than two years and seven court orders, we can finally share some of what we found in the Hinman speech documents. The SEC head of trading and markets warned Hinman that he was making up factors that, quote, go beyond the typical Howey analysis, as in not in the law, and that the speech could lead to not just confusion, but greater confusion on what is a security. Hinman ignored him. If the network on which the token or coin is the function is sufficiently decentralized, and the purchasers no longer have a reasonable expectation that a person or a group is going to carry out essential managerial or entrepreneurial efforts, those assets might not represent an investment contract. The same official told Hinman he should tie his speech, quote, more closely and explicitly to the Howey analysis. Hinman not only ignored him, but deliberately created factors beyond those identified by the Supreme Court in the Howey case. I wanted to just note a few things. This list is not meant to be exhaustive, but these are things that we look at. The SEC's own general counsel warned specifically that it's legally irrelevant if someone retains a stake in a token and is motivated to take action to increase its value, and that Hinman should delete it from the speech. And once again, Hinman ignored them and said without any legal support that it was important to ask. Has that person or group retained a stake and or other interests in the digital assets such that it would be motivated to expend efforts to cause an increase in the value of the digital asset? Both trading and markets and the general counsel also disagreed with Hinman's belief that if a network was sufficiently decentralized, information asymmetries would no longer exist, noting that a network creator would likely have more information than a retail holder, using Vitalik Buterin as an example. They warned Hinman that by creating this, quote, other category and focusing on information asymmetries, he was exposing a regulatory gap that the SEC may not have the jurisdiction to fill. Again, Hinman ignored them. As the network becomes more truly decentralized, the ability to even to identify a promoter 
or to make the requisite, then someone that could actually make the requisite disclosures becomes in many cases difficult or um, and perhaps much less meaningful. On June 4th, Hinman wrote that he didn't see a, quote, need to regulate Ether as a security and set up a call with Ethereum's co-founder Vitalik Buterin later that week to, quote, confirm our understanding. On June 11th, the SEC's own general counsel advised against including any direct statement about Ether in the speech because it would be difficult for the SEC to, quote, take a different position on Ether in the future. The next day, Trading and Markets wrote that the statements about Ether were, quote, likely to create more confusion. Hinman ignored all of them and decided to make headlines, picking winners and losers instead. Moreover, putting aside the fundraising that accompanied the creation of Ether, based on my understanding of the present state of Ether, the Ethereum network, its decentralized structure, we believe current offers and sales of Ether are not securities transactions. The emails show that Hinman knew he wasn't following the law. He knew he was making things up. And he knew that his speech would result in greater confusion in an already confused market. But Hinman went ahead with the speech anyway. And the SEC, despite knowing all this, touted the speech repeatedly. The SEC chairman himself pointed market participants to the speech. Bill Hinman recently outlined the approach we take to evaluate whether a digital asset is a security. And I encourage you to take a look at Bill's speech, which is available on our website. The SEC knew the speech didn't follow the law. The SEC knew the speech would create greater confusion. And the SEC knew Hinman was making things up. So why is the Hinman speech still on the SEC's website? Why was it ever allowed to be given at all? And why has the SEC pushed a policy of regulation by enforcement, falsely insisting the rules are clear?